everyone welcome back today we're going to do a full deep dive into one of the most interesting mitochondrial peptides discovered so far MOTC and when I say deep dive I mean the whole story what it is how it works and what the research actually shows and why the scientific community is paying attention this is still early research it's preclinical meaning it's mechanistic and mostly in animals but it's incredibly compelling and it gives us a whole new window into how mitochondria communicate with the rest of the body, especially during exercise and aging. So let's get into it. MOTC is what's called a mitochondrial derived peptide. That means it's encoded in the mitochondria, not in the nucleus, and it comes from a small open reading frame in the 12S ribosomal RNA region. But you don't need to understand any of that. We're going to break it down simply. For decades, we thought the mitochondria only encoded 13 proteins, and that was it. And then we started discovering these tiny peptides that act like signaling molecules. Humanin was actually the first one, and then MOTC was the next big discovery. So what makes MOTC unique is that under stress, like metabolic stress, it actually leaves the mitochondria and moves into the nucleus, and this is where it helps regulate gene expression. And it does that through pathways like AMPK, ACAR accumulation, NRF2 activation, and PGC1-alpha. We'll get into what all that means. All these are pathways we normally see with exercise, with fasting, ca um, calorie restriction, or other forms of stress or hormesis. So from the very beginning, researchers su suspected that MOTC might be a missing link in how the mitochondria coordinate whole body adaptation. One of the first observations about MOTC was its ability to improve metabolic function. In early studies, MOTC increased glucose uptake, it improved insulin sensitivity, it increased lactate production, and it enhanced the cell's overall stress resilience. And this was partly driven by AMPK activation. Now, AMPK is a master energy sensor, sensor in the cell. And again, it's activated by things like exercise or fasting or other types of metabolic stress. When AMPK is turned on, the cell switches from store energy mode to burn energy and survive stress mode. And as I said, exercise does this, fasting does this, low cellular energy does this. MOTC seems to target that same switch. And again, remember, this was all coming from a peptide that's literally encoded inside the mitochondria. Pretty cool. So the thought became, is MOTC one of the molecules that explains why exercise improves metabolic health so dramatically and so consistently? And that's what brings us to a research study that changed everything. In 2021, a Nature Communication paper basically put MOTC on the map. Researchers took young, healthy men and they put them through a cycling workout. They did muscle biopsies and blood draws at baseline during the exercise and after the exercise found was pretty cool. MOTC levels inside the muscle increased almost 12 fold after exercise and then circulating MOTC in the blood also increased during and after the workout for about four hours after. That's the first clear evidence in humans that MOTC behaves like an exercise induced mitochondrial signal, an actual peptide released in response to physical activity and that's why it sometimes gets the moniker exercise mimetic or exercise in a bottle. But it gets even more interesting. When the researchers gave MOTC to mice, performance dramatically improved. So younger mice ran longer, middle-aged mice ran longer, old mice, these are 22-month-old mice, they also ran longer, ran faster, and had better metabolic flexibility. And when they started MOTC later in life, around 24 months old, the mice showed improvements in their grip strength, their gait, walking performance, and even metabolic health and a trend towards increased lifespan. It's rare to see an intervention work this late in life and still improve physical performance and, and function this dramatically. Now let's shift into another important paper about myostatin. Myostatin is the muscle loss hormone. When myostatin is high, muscle growth is suppressed and muscle atrophy accelerates, and it goes up with aging. So it also goes up with inactivity, it goes up with obesity, insulin resistance, and it's one of the drivers of sarcopenia, muscle loss as we get older. This study found that MOTC levels in humans are inversely correlated with myostatin levels. In other words, higher MOTC, lower myostatin. 
which makes a lot of sense because MOTC is induced by exercise. And we know when we exercise, our body knows that we need our muscle. So it wants to hold on to it. And in mice and in muscle cells, MOTC actually suppressed myostatin expression. It also protected muscle cells from palmitic acid induced atrophy. Palmitic acid is a model for muscle metabolic stress and lipotoxicity, exactly what happens in insulin resistant muscles. Mechanistically, MOTC activates AKT, and AKT phosphorylates something called FOXO1, and then when FOXO1 is phosphorylated, it essentially gets kicked out of the nucleus and it can no longer turn on these atrophy genes. Atrophy is muscle wasting. So MOTC is hitting that AKT, FOXO1, myostatin pathway, which is one of the key pathways behind muscle loss. And this happens under metabolic stress conditions, which is when the cell in the muscle needs protection the most. So now we're seeing two layers. MOTC helps with endurance and fat utilization, and it also helps with preventing stress-induced muscle loss. You see why this is a very interesting peptide. Another interesting piece is how MOTC changes the cell's ability to survive metabolic stress. In that same Nature Communication paper, when muscle cells, which were called C2-C12 myoblasts, when these were put under metabolic stress like glucose and low serum, MOTC actually improved survival twofold. And when the stress ended, the cells recovered their growth capacity six times faster. That's huge. Healthy aging requires cells to adapt to stress, to recover from stress, and maintain proteostasis, which is the ability of proteins to correctly fold and function in the body. And what's even more compelling is the team found that MOTC impacts HSF1. This is heat shock factor. Heat shock factor is a master regulator of this proteostasis, you know, proteins folding correctly, and it activates uh, chaperone proteins like HSP40 and HSP70, these refold damaged proteins and basically help the cell survive. They are, you know, in response to like heat oxidation or metabolic changes. So it's a survival mechanism. And when the researchers created a knockout of HSF1, MOTC actually stopped working. So MOTC is acting upstream of the heat shock response, which again overlaps with exercise, fasting, and hormetic stress. Multiple studies now show that MOTC levels decline as we get older. Remember, this is a natural protein that your mitochondria make, and those levels start to decline with age, which makes this even more interesting. In older adults that are around 70 to 80, circulating MOTC levels are about 21% lower than in young adults. Lower MOTC is associated with higher blood sugar, higher insulin resistance, higher HbA1c, and increased obesity markers. So that age-related decline in MOTC lines up perfectly with some of the things that we see with aging, reduced metabolic flexibility, reduced tolerance to exercise, reduced mitochondrial efficiency, and that increasing myostatin and reduced stress resilience. This is one of the reasons people are curious about whether supplementing with MOTC could restore some of these youthful mitochondrial signaling patterns. Again, No claims, just purely a mechanistic discussion, but the pattern is pretty interesting. Now, when we zoom out, MOTC hits multiple hallmarks of aging. It activates AMPK, again, that energy sensor that's induced by exercise or fasting. It also engages PGC1 alpha, which means it's that's a pathway that helps to us to make more mitochondria more energy, all that good stuff. It also intersects with methionine metabolism. It influences NRF2 and antioxidant defense. It improves metabolic flexibility, and it supports that proteostasis of protein stabilization via these heat shock proteins. And it also suppresses myostatin under stress, and it enhanced endurance and physical capacity. Few molecules hit this many hallmarks at once. This doesn't mean that MOTC is a longevity drug, but it does mean it's part of a bigger story one where mitochondria aren't just ATP generators, they're signaling hubs that coordinate whole body adaptation. Now we have to be clear, this human data is limited. The exercise experiment is the strongest evidence we have. There are no large trials and no clinical approvals, but we can say this, exercise increases MOTC in humans, and that alone tells us this peptide is part of the natural adaptation to physical activity. 
everything else, the metabolic effects, the muscle protective effects, the health span signaling, those are all preclinical, which means it's just in animals, but they're very compelling. The most exciting part to me is the idea that MOTC could be one of the communication molecules that explains why human exercise is such a powerful intervention for metabolism and aging. If that turns out to be true, then understanding and potentially harnessing MOTC could open up a whole new door of therapies for aging, metabolic health, and performance once the human studies catch up. As someone who spent a career in molecular biology and oncology and now works in the longevity space, this is how I interpret the data. MOTC is one of the most interesting mitochondrial peptides discovered so far, hands down. Its ability to increase with exercise in humans suggests it's a real physiological player. Its metabolic and muscle preserving effects in animals are very strong and very interesting, very compelling. The late life improvements in physical activity are rare, but they're really worth watching because we know that people struggle with this later in life, and this could be an amazing tool. And the overlap with AMPK and heat shock proteins, methionine metabolism, and proteostasis places MOTC directly in the crossroads of resilience and aging. And it fits into a broader narrative of mitochondria as regulators, not just energy producers. We need human trials, but the science so far is extremely promising and definitely worth understanding. So that's your full MOTC deep dive. And if you're as fascinated by mitochondrial bi biology as I am, this one is fun to watch unfold. MOTC is still early. It's still very experimental, but it gives us a completely new angle into how metabolism, exercise, aging, and cellular stress response kind of fit together. Let me know in the comments what you think about MOTC and what you want to hear next. And I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.